when you've been looking at this user face for your whole trading career and then you go over to Webull, you're like, what? Even if you do this fancy thing where you expand it out and you get this whole graph, which essentially is the same as my Webull graph. The only reason why I'm not using this, because these are the exact same metrics I have on Webull, the exact same ones. The reason that I'm not using this is because when I look at the Webull, I have my whole watch list there and I could filter through graphs. Here, if I wanna filter through graphs, I have to go back out. I have to search a new stock. It's There's still, for all of the amazing things that Robinhood does as far as user interface, it's admittedly not a trading platform. So because I'm gonna be using it a lot more for technical analysis and also making leap trades, forget day trading, forget options trading. This is like what I wanna do when I'm just doing a standard leaps. I want people to know how I built this platform. Before you get into Weeble, you should know there's three different ways to view them. There's the app way, which I'm getting used to, but very, very easy to use once you know it. There is the website where you can like, if you're somewhere else, you can log into Weeble, but it's going to have different setups and uh, settings and different template than this. This one is the one you download right to your desktop. Now I use a Mac, so it's, it's right there. When you first come in, even the sidebar over here is going to be different for you. Now the ones that I have set up are my custom charts, my account information, yikes. I have my watch list that I can just look at and I have um, just what's going on in the market. So these are the things that I have. The other things that you can choose that I do not have on here, all layouts, you come up to Weeble layouts, all layouts. You can throw in stocks. So you can just have like certain stocks that you want to look at. You can have your screener up there. I don't, I don't really use stock screeners. I kind of use the discord and, and the, my friends and things like that. And the people I took talk to as my screeners, if you're going to be paper trading, they have an amazing paper trading platform. That's where I kind of started doing all of my, um, swing trades and like learning that. So I had that up there. I don't have it up there now because I'm not using it. So you can kind of, just by clicking the star, it'll throw it right here for you, okay? So that's like the first thing you want to do. And then you could sort these and pull these wherever you're at. When you click on this paintbrush thing that looks like a customized, let me get my face out of the way because this is going to be important. Up here, okay, which you can also change by clicking the settings button. This is how you switch to dark mode. You can change some basic colors. You can add a ticker along the bottom, okay, if you want. I don't have my ticker on. Uh, you can add tickers along the bottom. And then you can add some other stuff to the toolbar that I just don't have. But you may see somebody else with a different customized top bar. So here's how I set up this basic screen. Once you know how I set this up, the four time frames, which is the same exact stock on four different time frames. And if I click that stock, it changes all of those four time frames to that particular stock. And then because I like to buy options, I have the options chart as well. And this gives me the option for the company. And then it gives me a little bit of the chart right now so I can kind of watch what's doing as I want to enter limit prices. And then just my accounts and things like that. Currently has like 10 grand, then I'm down six grand. Yo, let's go. Down six grand, bro. Here's how you do it. There's a plus symbol up here. If you click it, it says new layout. There is a bunch of already preset layouts that you can click through. To be honest, I did it, but I didn't really love it. Then you can see I have the ones that I use. Main screen, four time frames, as well as options. And when I was just looking at that options one, I'm gonna I'm gonna add something to that. So I'll show you how you can add and then resave because saving <laughs> saving what you've done is muy importante. Because nothing worse than like setting it up how you like it and then forgetting to resave it and then you come back up and you gotta do it again. I'm just gonna go blank. So this is the blank thing that you're gonna see. Now it shoots this out, add widgets, but the add widgets is this toolbox right up here. So the first thing that you saw on my chart over here is the watch list. So if I go to my blank layout, I'm gonna look for watch list. Now at the top is quote, trade, all right? 
So there's different trade widgets that you can put, and we're gonna pull some of those. Stocks, different order flows, financials, things like that. There's general, watch list, screeners, and notes. Here's watch list. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click that. It's gonna bring watch list right into my blank layout. And then I can click and grab and drag it wherever I want. Now for me, I had it right over here. And you might be saying to yourself, well, this right here looks a little bit different than your watch list here, Brad. So what happened there? To the top right, there's gonna be these drop downs for everything. So if I click this, it's gonna say display mode. And if I click display mode, I'm on complete right now. I want to be simplified. And when I simplify it, it looks right the way it did. And I just pull, I can pull it as small as I want. So that is just how I did that. And adding all these other widgets are exactly the same. Over here, I have quotes and account details. So what I'm gonna do is inside my blank layout, I'm gonna go for, uh, what did I say, quotes? So let's go to stock. See if I have, where is quotes market, global quotes. Oh yeah, a quote. So here's a quote, I'm just gonna drag it in, bloop. And I'm gonna bring that over to where I had it over here. Now if you notice on mine, I have quote and account detail in the same widget spot. Okay, that's really easy to do. All I'd have to do is say, all right, I wanna find my account details. So where is that price account PNL account info? I click it in. Okay, there it is. Then I just drag it on top. Everything will light up in blue. Boom, there it is. And everything is, that's exactly how I do that. And you can add as many widgets as you want. Now, how do I make it so that if I click AMD over here, I see the AMD quote over here. That's this little down, uh, this little dash. Click that, set as group one. Boop, set as group one. Boop. So now every time I click on something on my watch list, the quote will come up. Now, if I had multiple tabs, that is a group cross layouts. So you'll see mine are not this color one, mine are this color one. If I come, they're all that color one, meaning every single time I click through one of these, every little widget box is a group number one. The next thing I'll add, we don't really need to see all these. Th those are all gonna be added the same, but the chart and my um, uh, my moving averages and stuff, I will show. The next thing I'm gonna add is that chart. The chart is probably the most confusing thing. So I'll just show you. First, I'm gonna just size it the way I want it. Now on mine, you can see I have room under it. So I just added more widgets. Down here, I have a positions, orders, this is a position for just that particular stock. So for example, if I click it, I don't have any Facebook positions open, so it doesn't show anything here. So I can look at my overall positions while watching Facebook, or I can just look at the positions. Let me go to something that actually have a position in Palantir. So Palantir, it'll show my one Palantir position, and then I have my regular standard positions. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. First thing that we will see is I have different moving averages and I have different colors. So right now we're seeing all of this information here. A couple of things that you could do right from jump. If you go to line style right here, this is where you're gonna change hollow candles. I know some people like hollow candles or if you wanna do like the old Robin Hood, you could do whatever you want. Um, I just personally just use this. I'm not sure, probably for contrast, why people use hollow candles. You can kinda just uh, let me know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know like how people do that. But as far as my lines and all my indicators, you can up here along the top, they have the ones that are important. So I click RSI is my first one. That's my first indicator I look at and MACD and boom. Now we can see it's already starting to look exactly like mine. I use the exact same default settings, but say you want to change the color of this line. If you scroll over it, there's gonna be this little setting icon. And when you come into it, you would go to the RSI setting Here's the length. These are all the same, but the style you might want to change. So I'm using the 14 day RSI. I have this really light blue. Maybe you want it to be something that's not as uh, blue. Maybe you want it to be something like red, hot, hot, red. So you do okay. You click done. And now your RSI line would be in red. The same for the MACD guys, depending on what color you want for your signal and what color you want for your MACD line. These are actually opposite on my chart. I use the signal in orange. 
scrolling. So I use the signal. I mean, I use the signal in orange and the MACD in blue. So I've just changed mine, but you could just change them to really whatever, really whatever you want. The next thing is going to be on the actual chart itself, the different moving averages. And depending on the type of account you have, you can add like a couple of these. I, I, I don't see why you'd want so many, but they have some of the standard ones like Bollinger Bands, uh, VWAP. Okay. So I actually have VWAP on mine just for the short term stuff, not so much for the long term stuff. So if I have VWAP here, my VWAP happens to be in white. I have it off right now, but it happens to be in white. So that's my VWAP. So if I wanted to change the color of VWAP to white, I would just go click here and then I would just change it to white. But now as far as the moving averages, so I'm going to click the settings here. Now there's two different moving averages that I use on my charts. I use a simple moving average and there's different lengths that you can choose. You could choose whichever lengths you want. Um, these are just 5, 10, 20, 30, 60, 80. I have a 180. So I'd have to take, I'd have to make one of these 180 and I'd click done. Now that doesn't put the 180 on my chart. So what I have to do is go back into it and I have to change the style. Okay. Right now I only have the five minute, which is why we see this magenta one, right? See this magenta because I only have the five minute clicked. I don't want a five minute. I just want a 180 and you can make that 200. You can make it whatever you want. And I keep it as a nice little uh, yellow. So you could just change that color if you wanted. Boom. And there it is. So there's my 180. So if we scroll out, we start to see a little bit more of a picture that I see on mine. The Palantir is a bad one to use because I have so many lines drawn on it. But. So now the last thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to add my other moving average. So if I click the MA and I click the edit, it brings up that screen with all the MA. So here's the MA. I also want to use an exponential moving average. Same thing. I want to use a 30 day exponential average. So I, I don't have to change any of these lengths. But when I go to style, I just have to make sure the 30 day is clicked. I'm going to get rid of the five that's already presented. I'm going to make this a little bit lighter blue so it's a little bit more visible on screen for people and done and boom that's essentially what we have going on which would be the same if i go back to the main screen and click spy the difference is on the day on the four hour chart right now we'll go to the day chart the day chart for this and the day chart for this if i scroll out day chart they're going to look exactly the same. Now along the bottom, they give you certain ranges and they give you certain intervals and you can change those intervals to whatever you want by starring them. Like say, I never want to look at the one minute. I never have to look at the one minute. I have to make sure that I make this part of my group setting. So now every single time I click something, boom. Now the last thing that's really, really important. And let me see when you come up to blank this and I click it, it just tells you that you should save as uh, a customized layout. You should do that every single time that you make any changes to this and you think that you like it. So for example, I'm going to get rid of this one that I just built. I just realized in the options one, I don't have my watch list. So every time I want to switch, I've been going back to here and clicking it and then coming back into here. So that's kind of dumb. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move everything over. Keep my exact same layout. Look at us just making changes together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a watch list widget. Where you at? Watch list, market, general, stocks. Did I miss it? Oh, there it is. And I have this over here. Oh, where the heck did you go? Oh, I joined it. So, yeah, so I joined it with this one. I just got to pull it out. Let's go with it down here for now. Let's make this this way. Slide. Let's make this a little bit smaller going to make this part of the display mode simplified. Boop. So now at least I know that I could come in here, my positions. If you have different watch lists, you can uh, change the different watch lists. So right now I have it on my positions. I'm just going to go back to all stocks. There we go. But now I just did that. So I need to make sure that I click save as customized layout. It's going to be called options. It's going to say, do you want to replace that? Cause it already exists. Boom. Save successfully. So now, sweet, I just made my chart a little bit better. Dope life. And I'm OCD, so I'm going to have to make everything fit nice. And I'll save it again tomorrow. But guys, that's really how you set it up. So I hope that helps.